Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we are ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. Thanks. Please stand by for opening remarks. Good morning. My name is Colleen Lemza, and I'm the director of the Shine On program at SUNY Plattsburgh, which aims to build communication skills, character strengths, and confidence in young girls. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank NASA for allowing us to bring thousands of children the opportunity to look to the stars. And to the student committee that made this all possible, thank you. We never could have done this without you. Your commitment and dedication is what makes the Shine On program so special. And now, here's our first question. Hi, my name is Dane, and my question is, having only been in space for two weeks, what are you enjoying the most? Well, on my second trip to space, the first two weeks have been a lot of fun, and I think the most fun thing, of course, is floating. Just moving around and uh, being able to push off the structure and go where you want to go, it's super fun. It never gets old. Hi, my name is Haley, and I'm a student in Mrs. Danville's class at Beefman Town Middle School. My question is for Megan. What gave you the courage and persistence to become a woman astronaut, and what advice do you have for young girls that want to go into space exploration? Well, Haley, I think I first started to think about becoming an engineer and an astronaut when I was about your age. And I think the thing that helped me the most is that nobody told me it was a thing that girls didn't do. And so I just went ahead and pursued that goal, of course, studying math and science in school and uh, looking at what, career re what the career required from someone. And so it was just never being discouraged by anyone in my support group that really helped me to be persistent. And so I would encourage you uh, kind of the same way to just um, share your goals with the people in your life and then move forward to pursue those goals. Hi, I'm Max Danville, and I'm a student in Mrs. LaCrosse's class in Kermelin Head Elementary School. I know that there are many experiments going on right now in the International Space Station. Which one's your favorite? And how about what we learn from it help us here on Earth? So about the about the experiments, there's a, there's a lot that we're doing up here. Um, you know, simply because being in weightlessness makes us see and discover things that you couldn't see on Earth. And one simple example is we, if we're putting together two melted metals to make an alloy, uh, on Earth is going to sediment based on their weights. And here it doesn't happen. So we can study this very clearly, very precisely. Uh, so we're, we're looking at new metals. We're looking at a lot of biology, medicine. We're looking at stem cells. Um, it's actually hugely diverse what we're doing. As we're talking to you, some of our crew members are doing crazy science all over the station. So there's uh, 232 experiments during the during the mission. Some of them are for us, uh, aiming to improve life on Earth. Some of them are for us to be able to go further and deeper into space and go forward to the moon and to Mars in the future. Hi, my name is Shakira. My question is, has there ever been a time when you became discouraged or questioned your ability to become an astronaut? That's a great question, Shakira. Um, becoming discouraged on the way to pursuing some of your goals. I think that happens to all of us. Um, and so I think a couple of things. One is that um, to setting a particular goal, like becoming an astronaut, it's a, it's a pretty big goal. And you have to have a lot of things line up just right and be pretty lucky to get selected to do something like we're getting to do. And I know that I, I feel lucky every day that I did get selected to do this. And so it's important to choose something that you really love to do and do that thing um, as well as you can every day. Um, and so that if you don't get selected to become an astronaut, you still love what you're doing every day. But the other thing is you really, um, you have to be able to bounce back from the small challenges 
challenges and things that are discouraging you along the way. And it's one of the skills that helps me in my day-to-day -day life. Even now that I am an astronaut, there's lots of little frustrations and sometimes big challenges, and you have to be able to face them and realize that even when you make a mistake or have a failure, you need to keep working. And so you need to bounce back and keep working at the things that you're trying to achieve. Hi, my name is Olivia, and my question is if you ever worry about the International Space Station getting hit by space debris. It's a, it's a great question. You know, um, it's actually for the very, very small, the tiny micrometeorites. We're, we're getting hit sometimes, but it's okay because we have big modules in metal what, that protect us. Our solar arrays are getting hit by the very, very tiny, small particles that float into space. For the, but it's okay because the station can handle it, and it doesn't do us really any, any damage. For the bigger space debris, they're tracked from the ground with big radar dish antennas, and then we're able to maneuver the station and move away from them. We're able to to predict their orbit, predict their trajectory, and if really there's a conflict, then we would move the station. But it's not, I mean, we're, we're paying a lot of attention to them, but it, it doesn't, it, they don't get in the way too often. It, ha it happens once in a while, but I would say not more than once every two years that we really have to move the station uh, to dodge the space debris. Hi, I'm Rhys. My question is, what precautions do you take before going outside of the space station? Um, you know, it's a very, very long and tedious process before you go out the space station because as soon as you're not protected by those walls, then the environment outside is extreme. There is no air, the temperature goes from minus 150 to plus 150, that's Celsius, I'm sorry, it's my European units, but Megan's going to give you the conversions right now. 270 to 270. <laughs> 270 to 270. Um, and, uh, and really, there's a, there's a lot that you, that you need to do before you're able to go out uh, with your spacesuit, so you need to... Um, first of all, configure the spacesuit for your size, uh, for your dimensions, and then make sure that everything is okay. Prepare all your procedures, prepare all your equipment. And then after a few weeks of preparation, after a few hours of preparation on the day, then you finally open that hatch and, and go out. That's a great feeling, but that's a lot of work from us uh, here on the space station and from the teams on the ground to be able to go out and do the work we're supposed to do outside. Hello, my name is Vanessa, and my question is, having made it to the International Space Station, looking back, what advice would you give to your eighth grade self? Thank you. I think one of the um, skills that's really important to have as an astronaut is really good team skills. So sometimes you need to be a leader and sometimes you need to be a follower and you need to know which one you need to be at any given time. So in order to have a really solid team, someone usually needs to be leading that team, but not always. And all of the team members need to be sort of marching toward that same goal and supporting each other. So working on those team skills, which sometimes means taking good care of yourself as well as looking out for the whole team. Um, those are the kinds of things to work on. And there's lots of different environments when you're in school that you can do that. It's not just sports teams, um, but it's also project teams in school. So different um, classes will have group projects that you need to learn to work together to achieve the uh, assignment together. So those are really good skills that you can be working on right now to prepare yourself for a job like this. Hello, my name is Lilia. My question is, what are you most excited about learning while you are on the International Space Station? You know, there's a lot. We, we learn things every day. Sometimes we work on experiments that we, we only discover right now what we're doing. It can be about um, you know, life science, medicine, anything. What what really excites me, I think, is all the all the experiments on uh, on physiology and and uh, all the medical experiments. Because I know nothing about it. I was an engineer, I was a pilot. So I, I don't have a medical background, and I find it fascinating that here on the space station, uh, you know, inside a glove box, we have stem cells, we have brain cells. Uh, we're looking at how they behave in zero gravity. We're doing all kinds of advanced life science experiments, and then we send the results uh, to to the ground. There's one that's really Really exciting that's coming up. Um, it has what they call mini brains. It's brain stem cells put together and they form mini brains, which is a very simplified model of the human brain. And I find it absolutely crazy that here in space uh, we, we have this advanced experiment about brains that, that's going to help people on the ground. Um, this is what excites me the most right now. 
Hi, my name is Kelsey and I'm an eighth grader at BM Town Middle School. My question is, what was the most unusual training that you had and how are you using that skill on the International Space Station? So uh, I think for me, the most unusual training isn't unusual in itself, but um, as Tama mentioned, we're both engineers, and so we don't have uh, much biology background. And so the most unusual training has been uh, for me to conduct the various biological experiments that we're doing. And the training itself isn't hard, but we get, you know, only a little bit of time to learn some of these skills that people spend a lifetime perfecting and then you really need to do a good job on their experiment that they've put so much of their effort into flying to the International Space Station. So fortunately uh, one of the things that we get to do when we're working some of these complicated experiments is we have a, a camera where the scientists can be looking over our shoulder and we wear a, a communications headset so they can be talking right in our ear and then if we have a question or a concern or a problem they can help talk us through it as if they were there there with us. So it's a, it's a unique set of skills that we don't exactly duplicate up here, but, but um, by having someone kind of looking over our shoulder, we do a pretty good job of getting their experiments done, or we hope to. Hi, my name is Ellie and my question is for Megan. As you know, there's a female expected to go to the moon in 2024. How does this make you feel as a female astronaut and for the future of women in space exploration? Thank you. Well, I'm very excited to see people go to the moon in my lifetime. The last time people were on the moon, I was just a, a brand new baby. And so I'm super excited to see that happen in my lifetime. And of course, we'll send women um, because we have so many qualified women astronauts. Um, and, and so it really isn't about sending a woman. It's about returning to the moon with all of the qualified people that we have. And so I hope that we see a very diverse and capable crew, which I know we will. And I'm super excited for whoever those people turn out to be. I'll definitely, definitely be watching. Hi, my name is Jacob. I am an eighth grader at Bigman Town Middle School. My question is, do you see a future for sports in space? But this is this is a great question, um, and actually we we have a few. I have my basketball up here that I can show you that I brought up. Uh, you can't really play basketball in space. It's it's not easy because the ball goes up and never comes back down into the net. Uh, that makes it challenging. But um, actually, all we have here we have a football. We have we have things like this. But there were sports that were developed for the Earth, you know, with gravity. And there's nothing that was ever made for to be played in in space. So I think a good challenge would be to come up with a sport. Or a game that uses really microgravity that could be 3d golf or 3d pool or snooker i don't know but something that would really use this environment um, to play with a new set of rules and a new set of conditions that could be a really nice project to work on hi I'm and yeah and my maybe question is what happens we also if have the olympics coming up pretty soon while they are living on the international space station Hi, I'm Angela. My question is, what happens if someone gets really hurt or sick while they are living on the International Space Station? So um, all of us up here are trained in some basic emergency medical response. So for example, if someone were to get a severe allergic reaction, then we would know how to treat them immediately. And then if there were longer term care that's needed, we have a lot of capability up here, a lot of diagnostic capability, um, meaning we can talk and we can um, get ultrasound pictures and we can share them with the doctors on the ground to help understand what is going on with that person and what kind of treatment they might need. So we, we really do have a lot of capability both on board Board and via what we call telemedicine. Hi, my name is Bailey, and I would like to know what the biggest challenge was for you when adjusting to a normal day in space. Uh, the biggest challenge, at least for me, uh, getting through a normal day is. I would say stowage and just the fact that the space station is so vast and so full of equipment and items everywhere and every surface that you see around us is being used. See, you have you have stuff on the walls, you have stuff on the ceiling, you have stuff on the deck. There's there's just things everywhere and behind the walls as well, behind the racks. Um, and there's several different modules in, in the space station, um, some of them in Russian, like labeled in, in Russian language. So sometimes when you want to do an activity, you need first to gather all your, all your 
your tools that are very specific, all your equipment, and it takes a while to, to find all your things uh, throughout the space station. So I think that's one of the challenges when you, when you first come here or when you're here at the beginning of the mission, you have to get used to it. And then after a while, you, it's like in a house, you tend to know where your things are um, and you stop asking. But initially I was asking everyone, hey, do you know where this is? Hey, have you seen this? Uh, but now we're getting settled and uh, we're asking less and less. Hi, my name is Madison, and my question is, how do you learn to adjust to sleeping in microgravity? That's a great question, Madison, about how we adjust to sleeping in microgravity. During the daytime, it's super fun to be able to climb around and reorient yourself and enjoy the environment uh, from all different directions. But it is a little bit uncomfortable when you're trying to sleep at night because your body is so used to lying down. And so one of the things that I did when I first got here was I used bungee cords, which you see all around our environment. And um, I used the bungee cords to hold myself against the wall so I would kind of have that sensation of laying down. And now that I've been here for a couple of weeks, my body has gotten a little bit more used to it and I feel quite comfortable floating while sleeping. There's a sleep station right here. And there is a sleep station right above our heads. This is where uh, Toma will sleep. It's uh, basically the size of uh, maybe two school lockers and he can fit all the way in there and uh, he'll, he has a sleeping bag and all of his personal items that he needs on a daily basis. And so it's, uh, it can be quite cozy and it's, quite, uh, it's nice and quiet as well. Hello, I'm Julia. I know it's really cold in space. My question is, how do they heat the International Space Station? The question was, how do you heat the International oh, okay, Space Station? Okay. Got you. Um, how do you heat the International Space Station? That's a great question. We have we have all kinds of, of um, technological systems here to to keep us just alive and well and functioning and to keep the at the atmosphere comfortable. Uh, one of them is thermal control. Uh, so there's different ways to control the temperature on board the space station. Like we said, outside it can get really warm or really cold, and we want to control the temperature. So some of it is just isolation. It's layers of protective material that's going to control the temperature inside, like when you wear a jacket. Uh, it makes your temperature inside more controlled. Um, some other systems are more complicated and can be active cooling. There's fluids, fluid lines going through the space station um, and trying to cool off the electronic equipment with water running through those fluid lines, um, taking the heat away from the equipment and then venting it away uh, through radiator panels into space. So it takes a lot of work uh, to keep the station going and uh, maintaining a, a comfortable temperature for the crew is part of it. Uh, but we have a lot of qualified people on the ground and they watch over our safety uh, you know, from the control center in, in Houston and uh, in other places all across the world. So they try to make it comfortable for us and we're thankful. Hi, my name is Jalen and I would like to know what your crew chose as your gravity indicator and how did you come to a consensus on that item? Well, our gravity indicator is right here with us. His name is Gwyn Gwyn, he's a little penguin. And basically two of us on the crew of four, the crew two, um, two of us have young sons. And uh, so we got together and we talked about something that both of our sons might like and, and they talked about it as well. And uh, we came up with a penguin. They're both very interested in penguins. And so it's nice to have something on board that is interesting for them and that we can talk to them about as well. And then, and then we told the other guys that's what it was going to be, and they said that was fine with them. Hi, my name is Krista Rabidou, and I am the current chairwoman for Shine On. Shine On is proud to represent SUNY Pottsburgh in bringing this program to over 4,500 students across New York State. I would like to thank NASA, Beekmantown Central School, our workshop presenters, our generous sponsors, and the amazing committee that made this all happen. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for joining us aboard the International Space Station today. Thanks to everyone at Shine On for your interest in the space program. We hope you follow along our mission as we're here for the next six months. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.